continued live coverage of the World Championship Men's Marathon. We're back with David Coleman. And they're just through halfway in this blazing hot day. The time at halfway, one hour, six minutes, 53 seconds. In the leading group, two Britons, Peter Whitehead, running a marvellous race from Skyrack, and Richard Naroka. Naroka, 555, Peter Whitehead, 573. This is the front of the pack as the Japanese... Nakamura and now 449 looking back is Nigiri who's some way behind the leaders actually the Ethiopian he's a pretty useful character too he's done 2 hours 10 minutes 50 seconds this year The halfway pace suggests around 2.14, but we suspect they're going to speed up in the second half of the race without any doubt. It's been a fairly casual opening first half of the marathon, and the group, all the main contenders that we've been looking for are in that group. It's good to see Richard Naruga playing a more... prominent part in this race and Peter Whitehead running well there in, to, be, to be in that leading group but I would imagine the second half will speed up and there's the split times you can see the opening half of the race is slower than the second part but the rest of it the whole thing will be I think will be run well inside two hours 14 but there's three Spaniards in that group the three Mexicans in that group. Good news is the two Britons in that group. And the running really hasn't started yet. The three Spaniards, 403, the European champion, Faiz. 404, Garcia, who finished second in the European Championship. And Giusdado, 408, third in the European Championship. Faiz, beginning to push it now, 403. Turbo is the Ethiopian in the green vest. Alongside him, 903 Espinosa, the Mexican. The Mexicans with a very strong hand indeed. And right in that leading group too, the man who's won the London Marathon for the past two years, number 900, Saran. That's the distance these runners are behind the leaders. Mark Hedspeth uh, just coming into the picture, third in the Commonwealth Games of Great Britain. Well, a bit of a disappointment there for Mark to be so far off that group and they're only offering a 2.14 pace. He's obviously feeling the effects of the, the weather and the conditions. But his, his race is just leading into these games were a little, I know he's a little disappointed with, and uh, he's having a bad time out there so far. They must be grateful for every bit of shade they can get. Peter Whitehead of Great Britain, who's running a, a Skyrack member, up there, up to, on the left-hand side, alongside him is Nakamura, and twice of Spain, the European champion. Peter Whitehead uh, has been living at altitude at Albuquerque, Brendan, and doing a lot of work out there, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He's been running well recently, but I just think he's... Uh, a bit surprised to find himself in the leading group at halfway and getting a little bit carried away. I think if he just settles down now, he's run half of a good race, but it could all come unraveled in the second part. And I just was disappointed to see him um, just stepping along there. When he looks around, he sees these athletes in this group that he's with. He'll realize there's a real set of class athletes amongst them. And uh, I just think he should be a bit careful and just not get too carried away and really try and concentrate. This is so far the best race he's ever run. 
but I didn't like the sign of him uh, spurting to the front there. That's been feeling good. Of course, there are far more in that leading group than that caption showed. And they include Steve Monigetti of Australia, the Commonwealth champion. He's right there still. Monigetti wearing 1-5-0. And before the race, he talked about how he might be feeling, or how the runners might be feeling, just beyond the halfway. Where F1 is very clean, makes you feel like you've turned the corner, and every step you're taking now is, is you're heading home. You're aware of people around you. you. Everyone that's there at the halfway mark is obviously a person that you're going to consider a threat. So you're very conscious. You're starting to just feel how they're breathing, how their their style and running pattern's going. But personally, you've looked at the time. You've said, OK, in your mind, you've got an idea now of what it's going to take to, uh, to finish this marathon in a high position. So you're starting to head for home. Well, some decisions to be taken out there. I wonder who will be first to try and break it up. There's still a lot in that leading group. At the park, named after the uh, first ever King of Sweden. It's a lovely area. Very nice city, Gothenburg. So they're winding their way through the park here, the athletes. The one bit they haven't got out on the main road. The breeze out uh, on the course has got a bit stronger. You can see the tree in the foreground there getting ruffled. It's from the northwest. But the temperature is still over 80. Well, this is the nicest part of the course. The athletes talked about the course. They talked about the, going through the park being a real relief from, from the road. And the crowd offering enthusiastic support all the way along. Brent, you can see in the background how much stronger the wind has got. It's a pleasant breeze. It is very, very warm out there. But it's not oppressive like it can be. I remember the last two World Championships ago in Tokyo when it was this temperature, but the humidity was so high. The humidity is only about 39% here, which is an advantage. But I'm sure it will take its toll in the first part of the race. One hour, six minutes and 53 seconds. The last flow by international standards. I can see them athletes approaching and Peter Whitehead running well there. But I think it would be wiser if he just tucked in behind a few of them. Just If you think about it, the great ones, they run quiet races. And the favourite for this race, Dionisio Ceron, the Mexican who won this year's London Marathon. We've been looking very hard at this group. And you can never see him at the front. You never see him until he means business. And he's right buried in there. There he is with the sunglasses on, just going through with a shaven head. Dionisio Ceron of Mexico, just staying away from everything, but never put a foot wrong so far. Actually, he lives at uh, about 50 miles outside Mexico City at a height of some 7,000 feet. So he's living and training at altitude all the time. Just out of shot at the moment, number 900, Sir Ron, winner of the London Marathon for the past two years. Eight one five beginning to struggle a bit as Langat, the canyon. And gradually, this leading group will be whittled down. Sakiri of uh, Algeria, who was with the leading group for a long time, dropping fast. That's uh, McConan, Ethiopia. And with so many up front, there's no way these athletes, some of them very good indeed over the years, are going to find a way back. Well, I would suggest the only place to be in this race is in the back of that leading group. Richard Naruga is at the 
front of the leading group, along with Peter White. Head. The two of them have got, got themselves in the right place, and now it's a case, the second half of the race, just calming down, just settling down. And there is... Mark Hutcliffe, a minute and 14 seconds behind that leading group, and that's a bit of a disappointment for Mark and for all his friends in Morbus Harriers and his coach, Jimmy Alder, who's out here. We expected great things from Mark after the Commonwealth Games when he got a bronze medal and then run superbly in London. But unfortunately, uh, today's not his day. Deacon of Canada. Meanwhile, back up front, things are starting to happen. Nakamura of Japan on the right as we look in. Whitehead of Great Britain. And Turbo. The Korean is there as well. Lee. 832. All the Spaniards. Fies, Garcia and Giordano. Richard Naroka going quite easily. 903 running wide is Espinosa. Whitehead looking very composed. We've not seen him living at this level before. <laughs> living at altitude must suit him. Certainly must. I mean, he, you can't say anything other than he's involved in this race. I mean, these athletes around him are uh, world class, and I would, I would, uh, you couldn't say that Peter Whitehead has demonstrated that he's world class, but today could be the day for him to do it. This is what he would want it. This is the best place to demonstrate one's world class ability. And Richard Naroga, being close to the leaders all the way, in a world of his own there, you can see the concentration on Richard's face. Peter Whitehead beginning to look around, looking to see who else is in the group, and the three of them just slowly edging forward. But as soon as anything serious happens, I think you'll see some of these athletes at the back of this group will take closer, will take closer order. The three Spaniards look threatening in there, the three Mexicans look threatening in there, and a couple of Japanese. Interesting, actually, that uh, the pace must have stepped up a little bit, judging by the gaps minor gaps that are appearing in that leading bunch but somebody's got to break it up Tunisian Mansouri has uh, done 213 this year won Paris last year won the Tunisian 5,000 and 10,000 meters this year, but uh, he's got a bit to do. Nakamura throwing away his sponge. Peter Whitehead looking for something on the far side, by the look of it. They're past the uh, watering station. Then Turbo of Ethiopia, Niraka of Great Britain. 404 is Fies, the European champion from Spain. Espinosa's there. Garcia's there. Just Dardo, all of Spain. Steve Bonigetti just on the back of the group. Well, I've just got word that split out. They ran through 25 kilometers in one hour, 19 minutes and 26 seconds. So that last five kilometer split, 1608. So still, they're only operating at 2.14 pace. And when you think of them, some of these guys ran two hours eight in London, albeit on a nice, cool spring day along the banks of the River Thames in this, in this year's London Marathon. 
so they've run six minutes faster than this. The heat will make a difference, but not, not that much of a difference. And what I was think from the way it's going now is there's going to be an almighty burn up in the last 10K. Thousands and thousands out on the streets. And the stadium, well, it's practically empty. There's more to see out there. Although the ones in the stadium are following the race on a big screen television. Nakamura. Done two hours, 10 minutes, 49 seconds. On the Optu Marathon earlier this year, his first ever marathon. So he's not uh, travel damaged in the sense he's run so many. Peter Whitehead right there, and they're beginning to uh, try and break up the group. And when you rejoin us, well, the battle will really be on. <laughs> 